Hey guys, what's going on? It's Phil here from TechSmart, and today we're going to be looking at 50 plus tips and tricks for the LG G3. So without wasting any time, let's go ahead and jump right into the video. Number one, if you want to rearrange your notification toggles, pull down your notification bar, swipe all the way to the right, and click on edit. Once you're in here, you can rearrange the toggles as well as enable and disable some of them. Next up, you can set a different wallpaper for each screen. So just long press on the home screen, click on multi-photo. Once you're in here, you can set a few different wallpapers of your choice, hit apply. And now when you scroll through, you'll see your different wallpapers. If we go back into the wallpaper options and click on gallery, you can actually set one wallpaper to stretch across the screen. Now this used to be a simple feature in Android, but it's not enabled by default on this phone. So by default, you have this small portrait wallpaper. If you click on this option right here, it'll go ahead and allow it to stretch across the screens. And it's gonna go ahead and enable it. Takes a little bit of time, but once it's ready to go, we can go home and when you scroll through your home screens, you see that the wallpaper behind it is also gonna be scrolling. Number four, you have a QMemo shortcut. So if you swipe up from the home button, in addition to getting to Google Now, you can go to QMemo. It's gonna go ahead and create a screenshot and you can write all over it. Number five is the camera shortcut. So if you turn off the display and press and hold the volume down key on the back, it'll quickly launch into the camera. Then you can go ahead and snap away and do whatever you wanna do with that. Number six is you can change the default messaging client. If I just unlock the phone, go into the settings, Go down to general, and you can go right in here and go default messaging application, change between messaging and hangouts or any third party apps of your liking. Next, you also have a secondary QMemo shortcut. So if you have the display turned off and you press and hold on the volume up key, that'll go ahead and bring up QMemo as well. You can go home and just unlock the phone again. Number eight is you have the ability to hide bloatware or unwanted applications that you can't necessarily uninstall. Open up your application drawer, click menu, click show hide applications, select all the applications that you want to hide and it's that easy. Number nine is you have the ability for custom themes. So open up your application drawer again, click menu and then click on themes. We're actually going to do this from home screen settings, theme, and then you can select a different theme of your liking or you can actually go download more themes from the, from the LG smart world. Number 10 is knock on. Now this is a really interesting feature. If we shut off the display, you can just tap twice and that'll go ahead and wake up the phone. And in addition to knock on, you have knock code. So if we hop into your settings, I'll show you the options for that. We can go right into display, lock screen, and then we have screen security. We can set up knock code. And now my current code is just these four dots. And we'll go ahead and re-enable them. So four dots, one, two, three, four. And we're gonna set up a backup pattern. One, two, three, four, hit okay. One, two, three, four, hit okay. So now what this is gonna let me do is when the display is off, I can just set, do that pattern. One, two, three, four, and it'll go ahead and unlock the phone for me. If I'd like, I can also just double tap and then I can set up that pattern. But it's just really nice. You don't actually have to unlock the phone or anything. You don't have to click the buttons on the back. You can just enter your pattern and get right into the phone. Number 12, you can say, okay, Google to quickly launch Google Now. Now that's only when you have this widget right here on the home screen and it's only when you're at the home screen. It doesn't work when the phone's off. It doesn't work if you're in another application. Number 13 is guest mode. So if you go into your settings, you go to general and you can go down to guest mode. This is basically your private area for somebody else to use your phone. So we're gonna enable this right now and we're gonna set the pattern one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So now when the phone is off, tap the screen four times, you'll see the different wallpaper, meaning it's guest mode. And now they only have access to certain applications. They don't have access to your photos. And it's basically their own little private area on your phone where they can mess around. And then if we go ahead and enter my password again, one, two, three, four, it'll bring me back into my area. Number 14, you have the ability to announce incoming calls and texts. So if you go into your settings, you go to your sound settings and you go to messaging and calls right here. If you go ahead and turn this on, you can actually have a voice read out the calls that you're getting and messages. You can also enable some of the settings in here too. I'm going to turn that one back off. Number 15, you can edit the navigation button. So back in your settings under display, 
and you have home touch buttons. And here you can change the button combination, so if you want to rearrange the order or add different icons, you can change the color, and you can even change the transparency. Number 16 is you have the ability to change the system font on the phone as well. Now, I'm not sure why you'd want to do this, the font looks really nice stock, but you know, customization is key. So we can go into settings, display, and then we can go to font type, and you have all of these different options to choose from. Number 17 is you can go ahead and lift your phone to answer calls. So if you hop into your settings, you go down to general, and then you can go to gestures. You have this option right here for answer an incoming call just by lifting the phone and placing it up to your ear. Number 18 is smart cleaning. So settings, go into your general, and then you can go down to smart cleaning. This is going to go ahead and free up space on your phone. It's going to search for temporary files, your downloaded folders, idle applications. Basically, it's like your system cleaner for your computer, but built into the phone. And it's really nice and can be very helpful if you have some unwanted applications. Number 19 is dual window. So if you press and hold on the back key, you're going to have this little pop-up right here. Tap two applications, and it'll go ahead and show them side by side on your phone. Really easy to stay productive. Or if you want to watch a video and browse some news at the same time, you can do that also. Number 20 is the ability to disable your LED notifications. So go into your settings, go to your display, LED, and you can turn them off right here. You can also go into your notification settings and you can enable some of the different ones, so battery charging, incoming calls, missed calls, or downloaded applications. 21 is you have the ability to resize the default keyboard. So we'll go back into the settings, we'll go into general, we'll go to language and keyboard. Under the LG keyboard, click the settings, click on keyboard height and layout, keyboard height. And now you can adjust the height and you can go ahead and test it out as you'd like to see if you're really going to like the smaller keyboard or a ginormous one. And you're also going to have the ability to customize the keyboard layout. So if you hop back, you can go right into bottom row keys. So for example, if you like using hashtags a lot, you can go ahead and change different symbol keys and add in a hashtag icon or add an at reply icon, kind of do whatever you want and really make the keyboard fully customizable. Next up, and this is the feature similar to on the iPad, you can actually do split keyboard. So I'll go ahead and open up Twitter. We'll go ahead and compose a new tweet. And when the phone is in landscape, you can actually just push your thumbs together or apart to split the keyboard to make it a little bit easier to type. Number 24 is you have the ability to enable lock screen widgets. So if you pull down your settings, go to display, go down to lock screen, you then have widgets right here. It's disabled by default, but you can quickly enable it and get your lock screen widget game on point. 25 is smart screen. So open up your settings, go over to the display, and then you have smart screen right here. Basically what this is going to do, it's going to watch your eyes. And so long as you're looking at the display, it's not going to shut off the display. It's really helpful. It's a feature kind of brought over from Samsung, but you know, it's a nice feature and I'm happy they used it here. 27 is you can change your home screen transitions. So go into your settings, go to display, go to home screen. Once you're in here, you're going to want to go ahead and choose screen swipe effect. You can do slide, panorama, accordion, breeze. All these different ones, it's almost like having a third party launcher on this phone, but it's stock. It's really nice, and LG is really just throwing the customization options at you with this device. Number 28, you can actually show your battery percentage. So I have mine on right here because I definitely love this feature. Go into general, and you're going to want to look for battery. Once you're in battery, you can do show battery percentage. So you have it turned off or on if you're a minimalist and you don't want it, you know, keep it off. But I like it on, it makes life a little bit easier. 29 is actually enabling battery saver. So you have this option right here for battery saver. And if you go into the settings, you can choose when it becomes enabled. You can also choose what it's doing and how much of whatever it's doing it does. It's nice. We'll turn it on right here. So at 30% battery life, it's going to turn off my Wi-Fi if I'm not using data, turn off Bluetooth, turn off NFC. We can have it disable auto sync as well, which I'm actually going to keep on because I have a lot of stuff syncing at all times. Number 30, you can set lock screen info. So right now on my lock screen, you see it says call 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. If we go into your settings, and once you're in your settings, you're going to go ahead to set uh, display, lock screen, and you have contact for lost. Now, obviously this is meant for lost, whatever, but you can do some cool messages like, yo, 
that was very lame, but you can have your lock screen say yo now. And isn't that what everybody's always wanted? <laughs> Next up, you can double tap the home screen to actually shut off your display. So this goes hand in hand with knock on. Anywhere that's empty on your home screen, double tap it and you'll shut off the display. You've seen me using this throughout the video, so it's clearly a pretty useful feature. It's something I definitely enjoy to use. Mm, everything glitched out there for a second. 32 is Daydream. So if you go into settings, this is actually an Android feature, but I wanted to include it because most people don't really know that this is there. Go into your settings, go ahead and go down to Daydream right at the bottom of your display settings. And you're going to want to enable this, but we can do some of the different day, uh, Daydream options they have. Now you can download more of these from the Play Store. Uh, basically what this is going to do, it's more or less a... Uh, it's more or less a screensaver for whenever your phone's charging. So this one's going to show the clock and we're going to have it turned on. And basically when you plug your phone into the computer and the display shuts off, it'll go ahead and start doing this cool little screensaver. Kind of helpful. I mean, if you like that thing. Next up, you can use your phone as a remote control. So there is an IR blaster on the top of this device. And if you go into your applications, the app that's going to actually control this is called Q remote, wherever it's at Q remote right here. And you just go ahead, this is going to ask me to set up a TV. Doesn't work for Insignia TVs, you know, I have like a garbage whatever TV in my room, but it didn't want to work with mine. However, there are a lot of different brands in there, Sony, all the really major players, I guess. I just need to stop being cheap and get a better TV. Next, you have QSlide. So this is actually really cool. So if you pull down your notifications and you click on QSlide right here, you can select any of these applications and it'll overlay it on top of whatever you're doing. So a little bit different than the dual application and definitely more helpful. You can also change the opacity and it's really great. We can close that right there. Number 35 is enabling one handed use on this phone. So obviously this is a pretty big display. So if you go into your settings and you go to your display settings, actually, if you go into your general, we can go down to one handed use. And in here you can enable some different options. So I'll just show you the dial pad. If we turn this on and we go to your dial pad, it's going to default to one of the sides. So if you're right handed and you want to type with one hand, boop, boop, boop left-handed you have the same thing and that also works for the keyboard as well it makes it just a little bit smaller and kind of shrinks everything down on the screen number 36 is just a helpful feature and that's when you long press the multitasking button it works in legacy applications as the menu key so if you're in an application that isn't necessarily updated to where you're going to have these three dots press and hold the menu key multitasking key and it'll work as your menu key for you so that's just helpful for you guys to know now number 37 is you can disable those annoying sound effects that you hear clicking every time I click around. Go into your settings, go to sound, and then you have sound effects. Turn them off. They're annoying. And here you go. Silent. Really nice. Next up, you have quiet mode. So this is going to be number 38. And if we go into your settings, go down to sound once again, you have quiet mode right here. You can enable it right away, or you can actually set a schedule for it. So if we enable it and go to a schedule, you can choose certain times where it's going to enable and disable. Basically, it's, you can have it block calls. You can have it just silence your phone. Very helpful if you're sleeping or if you're going into a meeting. You can enable it and you won't be bothered by anybody. I promise. Next up is battery saving location mode. So we saw this on the HTC M8, I believe. If we go into your settings, we can go to general and then location. And now we have mode up here and we can do battery saving. So what this is going to do, it's not going to use your GPS. It's only going to use your mobile network or your Wi-Fi. So it's not going to be as accurate, but it is going to save your battery life. I'm going to put high accuracy back on because, you know, who needs battery, right? Number 40 is the ability to refocus photos. So this isn't really a feature talked about because every phone has it nowadays. If we open up the camera, we can go to mode and you see magic focus right here. So what this is going to let us do, we'll go ahead and pull something into the shot, like this bottle of water, and we'll take a picture. And we'll move this out, and you heard all of that noise happening. So now we have this photo right here, and we can basically just drag to focus, and it'll focus all around. Essentially, it's just taking a ton of photos and letting you choose the one that you want after the fact. 
but it is helpful and I mean now that every single major phone on the market has this feature of course it seems to that LG should follow up with it number 41 is found back in the camera as well so we're gonna hop right out and you can actually click on settings go right here and you have slow motion video recording at 720p now you'll see more about this in our full review it's not the best but it's there it's available but it's not the best I'll give you guys that little pre-review right there number 42 is you can actually use the volume key as a shutter for the camera so this works great if you're taking a selfie but it also works if you're just wanting to click volume down let me get it off of this normal mode we'll go back to auto so I'm using the volume down key quickly taking pictures again if you're taking a selfie and you want to get all like back with it you can flip it and take an awesome selfie next up is color adjustment so this actually is a pretty interesting feature if you go into your settings you get on to general and you're gonna to want to go to accessibility once you're in accessibility look for color adjustments and we'll enable this and you can basically drag around and set a different color tone for your phone uh, it's a bit crazy and I'll show you why in a second we'll go something a bit deep with a lot of contrast so now my phone looks like it's gothic it's like black and pink and all that crazy everything and there's a lot of contrast so if you like that it's cool uh, you obviously don't have to go that dramatic with it if you just want to change a little bit of the coloring you can do that too next up is the ability to have a universal touch now this is basically assisted touch ripped straight off the iPhone it almost looks the same uh, we're gonna go to settings we'll go into general and accessibility once you're in here you can click on universal touch wherever it's hiding and we'll enable this and you now have this little icon right here which you can move around and wow that's similar so what this is gonna let you do obviously you jump home volume buttons if anything doesn't work or if you can't necessarily reach around to the volume keys on the back you can use this little button right here to essentially launch all of those very quickly but we're gonna hop into the settings and disable that because it can also be very very annoying if you don't need it so number 45 is the ability to sync your QMemo notes with Google Drive. And this is actually really cool. So if you go into QMemo and you can go into your settings right here and you can actually add an account. Now I've added my MyPespo account and it's going to go ahead and choose a sync interval, whatever I'd like to do with those settings. So now all of my notes are going to show up in my Google Drive. So everything is synced everywhere. Number 46, you can set a text message theme. So again, going, like I said, LG really throws all the customization options at you. Click on menu, settings. Once you're in here, you can go to conversation theme and you can choose like every option you want. So we can do like the animal looking bubbles with this background, or you know, we can even take a picture. So let's set that and we'll hit okay. So now you have a super awesome totally rad conversation theme but not really <laughs> number 47 is you can enable QSlide from within the application so I showed you QSlide was that feature where you can overlay an application if you go to any apps that have that feature such as the calculator if you see this icon that's the QSlide icon tap it and it'll go ahead and shrink the application down and you can go about your business and still have your little calculator popped up Number 48 is the ability to customize icons. So this is again very cool. If you press and hold on an icon and then just drop it back down, you get that little icon right above it. Tap on it and you can change the icon and that's pretty much it, but you can change the icon. So if you want to keep a very uniform theme and you want to change your Instagram icon to a B, you can do that. Number 49 is customizing the settings menu. So if you pull down the settings menu, and you click on the menu button right here you can switch to a list view this is a little bit more it's a little bit easier to view I think um, you don't really have all those tabs and you have everything just in a vertical list but again to each his own and you have options LG gives you options so number 50 you can customize your decline messages so if you want to duck somebody politely go into your settings 
you're gonna want to go ahead and actually you know we're gonna go to your dialer and from within your dialer we're gonna click on your settings and once you're in here you can decline with message and you can add a custom message so if you want to say I'm can't type I'm sorry now when somebody calls you you can quickly type and say I'm sorry or you can just say stop calling me I don't want to hear from you but you know everybody's different and again LG gives you options number 51 you can sort your contacts by first and last name so similar to I guess every phone on the market but in case you want to be all business like and have last name first you can go into your contacts go into your settings and once you're in here, you can sort by list and change from first name to last name. I like first name because I'm a normal human. 52 is a screenshot. Now this is a very important feature, especially if you use Snapchat. So if you want to quickly take a screenshot, it's a little bit difficult. You have to press the power button and the back button. Power button, volume down button at the same time rather. And it'll go ahead and take a screenshot. So good luck quickly getting that on Snapchat. But if you can, let us know in the comments below. Anyways guys, that was 50 plus tips and tricks on the LG G3. Sorry this video was so long, we showed you a lot of tips. Let us know in the comments below which tip was your favorite and if you're going to be picking up an LG G3. Anyways, stay tuned for the full review as well as subscribe for a ton more videos covering everything known to man. See you guys in the next one. Later.